Hi. Um, for my final project for this class, um, I chose to uh, revise my rubric and lesson plans um, to be solely standards based um, and also um, eliminate um, scores in the gradebook for um, formative assessment and only focusing on summative assessment. Um, so initially to begin this project, um, you know, we were in class, we were focusing on the National Core Arts Standards. Um, and so I really took a deep dive in what it meant to have the, the my lessons and my rubric focus in these four areas of creating, performing, responding, and connecting, um, and actually performing, that's not correct, it's presenting <laughs> um, visual art. Um, so I, I, I really took a good look at the anchor standards, um, uh, you know, the substandards underneath each of these, and tried to reevaluate my rubric and my lessons um, to be sure that I, I was, that this was my target. Um, of course, then I also, um, you know, revisited the Illinois arts learning standards um, so that, you know, just because the, obviously these are a little bit more, have a little bit more um, information provided inside each of them. Um, so, and I want to make sure as an Illinois teacher, I was um, meeting these standards as well. So this is something that um, I've presented to my art colleagues, and I will also be presenting this to um, my larger department, which includes world language and music, as our school um, in the next two or th to three years will be uh, switching to solely standards-based. So to give you a view, this is um, a, the rubric that my team um, has used for the past couple of years. Um, and, you know, as you can see, we across the top, we were um, providing points um, for advanced, strong, good, weak, and then insufficient. And then um, our areas of, uh, of the rubric were creative solution, craftsmanship, um, media, and effort use of time. So um, not only did I do the readings for this class, but I also read a, a book called The 15 Fixes um, for Grading Practices. And through the readings in class and the readings in that book, um, I realized I needed to change this. Um, it wasn't the, the students when they would when I would provide feedback based on this rubric, it wasn't really explaining what, what standards they met. They didn't understand what standards they needed to work on still. Um, and I, it just, it, it just wasn't a good fit anymore. So therefore I revamped my rubric and, um, now the students, um, you know, they can, see it's still, you know, it, it, I kept some things, some wording. Um, so we still have the advanced proficient approaching and not attempted. Um, I do not give zeros in my class anymore. So, um, a not attempted is, uh, you will, you would still be in the one area. Um, and if you notice right here, uh, I have associated four, three, two, one, with a point value because I still need to um, translate that into a, a grade, um, you know, because high school students need a specific grade for college transcripts, you know, that sort of thing. Anyway, so, um, you know, the top is somewhat similar, but now I'll, uh, each section is very, very focused on the standard. Um, and so for each standard, um, you know, I have the anchors underneath, and I have a point value associated which e for each part of the project, um, for each standard. And um, for each project, I, this is the general rubric. And then every time we work on a project, I'll let the students know which one of these anchor standards we're actually focusing on. Because if we tried to focus on all these anchor standards, that's just way too much. Um, so for each project for creating, we'll focus on one of these specific anchor standards, okay? And then um, depending on, you know, where they are as far as meeting the standard, um, you know, if you were advanced, if, I, if, if 
you finished a project and, and you met all of this criteria here for advanced creating, um, then in power school, the grade book, you would get 30 points. Um, so previously my, my projects were always worth a hundred points. And then, um, the formative assessments were worth some, you know, like 10, 20 points. Um, so there's now no, um, formatives assessment grades. There's still formative assessment, but there is not a, a, a grade for it. And um, my projects are still worth 100 points, but instead of just getting one lump grade, um, which I'll show you here in a second, uh, each student gets a grade for the project based on the standard. So I'm gonna switch over here to PowerSchool. Um, you can see here in PowerSchool, I have um, th uh, my painting students did a watercolor painting and you can see that that summative assessment is in here four times um, and with four different standards connected to it. So they're getting a grade for each standard and there's a point value associated with each of that standard. You can also see that my, my formatives um, are in here as well because they're still responsible for it, but it's a collected only situation. Um, so as far as how that changes my uh, lesson plan, each day that we are working, um, I make sure that I put the portion of the rubric, essentially the standard that is being worked, um, or that is the focus of that day or a couple of days, um, so that they know, okay, to, you know, today we're doing reference photos and sketches. And so that is going to go under the creating standard. That's what um, it's going to look like in power school. This is worth 30 points. So, you know, if, if they're aiming for that four, they're really over here in the purple area. You're trying to get all of this um, included and uploaded to the appropriate places. Um, and then you can see as we move through there, um, you know, the, the, Day, the uh, rest of the assignment, I would I would post this up and they would know that, okay, today, you know, because presenting and connecting kind of um, work together on art projects. So, you know, they're like, okay, I'm working. I'm really trying to aim towards a four. So that means I'm really trying to push my ideas. I'm really trying to try something different, take a risk. Um, so, yeah, I've had to go through and redo all of my slideshows and my actual lesson plans to reflect the change in um, my objectives and goals for the lessons and make sure that I'm um, targeting the standards. Um, I'm hoping that this will provide the students more feedback, um, more specific feedback as to where they could use some improvement. Uh, in my classroom, I allow for... Um, you know, once something is turned in and I hand it back, they're all, they're always allowed to revisit it based on the rubric. So this makes it a little easier for them to figure out like what part of the project do they need to revisit? Was it the sketches? Um, was it the artist statement at the end when it's responding? Did they just were they just not connecting with the initial um uh, presentation of the elements and principles or w whatever the, the the main goal of the project was. So I'm hoping that this will provide um, more insightful feedback, make it easier for students to figure out what where they land as far as the standards um, are concerned, and then what they need to do to um, meet and exceed those standards. Um, my team, we're pretty excited to incorporate this. Um, you know, it, it'll likely going from so, uh, summative formative situation and then to a solely um, summative is going to definitely <laughs> um, be a learning experience and I will be reflective and I'm working with um, my administrator. It's my goal um, as far as uh, my evaluation is concerned. So I'll be working with my administrator as well for reflective practices. Um, then that is my presentation on my new rubric. Thank you.